take a look at how to do our seed of life shape using GeoGebra. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the grid lines. So we're going to click what we call a cog wheel right here. And we're going to do something to get rid of them. We're going to click it. First, we're going to get rid of the X and Y axis by clicking the first box. We'll click it again. Then we'll go to settings. We're going to click grid and get rid of the grid lines. Uh, that will help us to have a nice blank space. Next thing we need to do is put our name. So we're going to click more. We're going to go to the bottom where it says text. And we'll click on the corner here and enter our name and our period. So one thing we could do to move stuff around is we can click the move tool if we'd like. We can also click it twice and change the color if you really want. You don't have to do that. Uh, we're going to use the circle with center tool. So I'm going to click that. And the way it works is you'll click it, make the circle as big as you want it, and then click it again to set it. So I'll click it this big. So I can start where B is, click it, and I can go and put my cursor, the mouse button or the mouse cursor on point A. Click it again. I'm going to go to where the two circles meet, click it, go to the center again, center A, click it again. Go to the top where the two meet. Click it again, click where the two meet, click it again. If I make a mistake, I can click the back button. It's on the top, the undo button. Click where they meet, click the middle. And now we have our seed of life. Look at the seed of life. We want to ask, well, what is it giving life to? Well, it's giving life to the basic geometric shapes we use every single day. Um, the seed of life is giving life to shapes that we can replicate or repeat such as this is what we call a regular triangle where the sides are all equal or congruent um, we can connect the lines and make an isosceles trapezoid where the two sides are congruent which is really we can see it's going to be half of a hexagon you can make a hexagon and again you can cut it in half and make two trapezoids you could make a rectangle you can make the Star of David, where you make a triangle and then another triangle upside down. You'll, you can make a diamond, or what we call a rhombus, which has congruent or equal sides. Um, and so you also see this shape, the very basic shape with six sides, many, many places in nature. You can see them in flowers. This is a, I believe this is a strawberry bud. Uh, to me, I tend to look at flowers as stars. They look like stars with geometry shapes and patterns. Even the middle looks like a star or, or something like a star forming. You can use it to make mandalas. A lot of them will have a basic six-sided design. And this one has 12, which I just repeated the process twice. So I doubled the amount from six to 12. So you can even add more circles and give you know multiples of 12. You could do 24. And it looks very spirally in 3D. Some students had made some quick artwork. Um, you can actually extend the circles and connect it to make a star called Metatron's Cube. This is a little artwork someone did. Uh, some student used it to make double the amount of six. They did 12 and made this and this. So there are a lot of uses. Um, You'll see it in, in the Hindu culture, they'll use this star, but we also use it in the, the Jewish culture, the Star of David, we call it. Here is a lily, has six sides. Here's another lily. Um, so you'll see these patterns uh, even during Christmas time, the holly. Here's another daffodil. Okay, but then we also can see, um, you know, if you take a circle, six circles will fit exactly around it. You could try that with pennies or with quarters. And so we, we don't realize, we think a honeycomb is a hexagon, but it's really a bunch of circles packed together with, with honey in them. And then around it, it forms the shape that's hexagonal. 
And so it allows you to stack or pack things close together. Um, and you will see it in many other places, the six-sided flower. Every single snowflake is different, but every single one of them has a six-sided shape. And, you know, maybe the molecules, since they're circles, they just naturally form in that, in that shape. It's the most efficient way to, to form it. So, you know, it's, it's something that, although simple, we can appreciate that drawing and being able to draw circles is something that has allowed us to expand and make tons of other shapes and artwork and other things to go along with it, let alone just making a circle, which, you know, creates a wheel, a speaker, and even the planets are circles and atoms are circles, your blood cells are circles. So the circle was the beginning of, of giving life to understanding a lot of different things. Go another layer and be able to complete all of the flowers in the middle here. You can do that. But we started with just the seed of life. That's all we really needed for my assignment here. What I also did in my class was we did a circle and then where the point on the edge is we drew another one and we connected the lines to make our perpendicular bisector and so we just wanted to take a look at how once you could draw two circles once you had a compass you now can make a cross you can make right angles you can make corners corners in buildings corners on your paper corners to help with tools instruments things that you're building and designing and so you know, when you're making a building, if it's not completely uh, per perpendicular to the ground, it's going to, gravity is going to pull it down towards the ground over time. And uh, the taller the building, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the more it's going to be pulled. And the Leaning Tower of Pisa is actually corrected. They fix it every single year, but they like to leave it a little bit off because the tourists enjoy it. So right angles or perpendicular angles are really a bigger part of life than let me see in life particular lines in life it's really something again in not only building designing construction you'll see them all over the place these are aren't very fun examples but when you look around your room every corner has perpendicular lines let's see in buildings and you'll see them all over your classroom even on the ceiling so just a reminder that, you know, there's another video I have about this shape. It's called the Vesica Pieces. You'll see it in religious symbols and other places. And, you, you know, you might even see those of you who remember the Catholic or Christian tradition, they have the Jesus fish. You have a football that you make. You can uh, begin to look at optics and an eyeball. And so there are a lot of different uh, purposes for this. But in the video I made about the vesica pieces, you have square root of one, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four, and square root of five that could be made just out of this shape. So it's something people who are really into geometry and want to understand it really might want to look at. And I'll put a link to that in, in the description. So let me just do a quick Google search for vesica pieces and we can take a look at that. So you can see it, the design of it, it's just two circles. That's how we get perpendicular lines. And it's really an important construction. You, you see the Buddha and Jesus and other religious figures were, were put in it. I see sometimes a kind of that shape in the Virgen de Guadalupe necklaces students have. And um, they call it like an egg. It gives, it gives birth to life, creativity, buildings, design. So, um, well, I don't know if this is the Vatican, but they use it. You'll see it a lot. So, it, you know, it's just something to help us appreciate that these simple things we can do with the compass are kind of very, very important before we had computers.